Hello friends The economic ideas are divided into two main school of thoughts In the mainstream academics students study classical and keynesian economics There are more school of economics than these two and we will know about a few more in the lecture Publication of the Wealth of Nations by Adam Smith saw a new group of thinkers in the 17th century. Today, we call Adam Smith and the people who share similar ideas as classical economists. The main idea that the classical economists shared was that a nation's growth depends upon the stock of capital it has. The nation with high amount of capital will tend to prosper more hence accumulation of capital is what the country should strive for if the countries want to prosper similarly in the 1800s a german philosopher karl marx represented the problems with the classical ideas especially capitalism the group of economists who shared similar ideas as karl marx are called marxists after the great depression when the classical economics seemed to fail a british economist came up with new ideas to revive the economy he placed more power in the hands of the government contrary to the classical economists who believed in minimal government intervention the economists who shared similar ideas as j m keynes came to be known as keynesians economists however a different school existed before all the schools that we just discussed before 1700 there were the group of administrators entrepreneurs merchants in different countries who shared similar ideas they all believe that for an economy to prosper the economic policy of the country should be designed in such a way that it maximizes exports and minimizes imports the advocates of this idea came to be called as the mercantilists and the school of thought that these mercantilists belong to came to be known as mercantilism mercantilism is known by different names in different countries in france it is called colbertism in austria it is called cameralism sometimes it is also preferred to as bullionism Mercantilism is called as bullionism because it gives most importance to gold and silver. The further section of this video is designed in three parts. First, we will see where the mercantilism originated. Second, we will see the main ideas behind mercantilism. And third, we will see certain criticisms to the mercantilist ideas mercantilism mainly originated in the european nations it reigned in countries like england france germany italy spain and scotland it also prevailed in russia The mercantilist thinkers gained prominence in the 16th century and the school of thought remained in prominence till Adam Smith wrote the book Wealth of Nations. Mercantilists believe that a nation's wealth and prosperity is reflected by the amount of precious metals especially gold and silver reserves that the country possesses. Gold and silver were two commodities which were given special emphasis the reason behind it was that gold and silver were used as currencies during that time however 
the access to gold or silver was not possible for every countries some countries are blessed with gold mines however many are not the way one could accumulate more gold and silver was through exporting more goods than importing them this way a country could accumulate more amount of gold and silver and become prosperous all that mattered for a country to become prosperous was large trade surplus hence the mercantilists believed that the government should frame policies in such a way that would maximize exports and minimize imports the way in which the government could promote more of exports and less of imports was through means of tariffs and quotas the mercantilists also considered commerce and industry as the most important branch of the national economy by promoting commerce and industries mercantilists believe that exports would increase the least important branch for the mercantilists was agricultural sector it might seem unusual for an economic thinker to think so however considering the 16th century where every country was producing enough agricultural products increasing exports by selling agricultural products was very difficult as you can see mercantilists believed in zero sum game this means they believed the fact that the only way for a nation to prosper would be to actually hamper some other nation's exports any gain one nation required a loss by another nation this is because if every country wished to export more then there would be many countries that would end up importing more this way wealth moved from importing countries to exporting countries let's discuss a few criticism to mercantilism as we can clearly see that the mercantilists gave too much importance to gold and silver and neglected all the other commodities however the classical economists pointed out how gold and silver were also normal commodities and a lot of import of gold and silver in one's country would increase the supply of the commodity which would make its value decrease another criticism that the mercantilists faced was that they believed in the zero sum game however later adam smith and david ricardo showcased how it was possible for two countries to prosper at the same time mercantilists also believe that large trade surplus are very important for a country to develop whereas we can see modern economies like india and many other nations develop with a trade deficit last but not the least they exaggerated the importance of commerce and industry and undermined agriculture however in modern economies we do realize that agriculture plays a significant role in the development of a country This was mercantilism in a nutshell for you guys. I hope you got to learn something new today. Thank you for being patient. Until then, adios. Hasta la vista.